Welcome to a solution video from the 2021 AP Statistics exam. We're going to take a look at a fully explained answer to FRQ question number one. All right, let's take a look. So the length of stay in a hospital after receiving a particular treatment is of interest to the patient. Hey, I'm going to the hospital. How long am I going to be there? Obviously, the hospital cares, the patient cares, the insurance providers care. Okay, you get the point. Of particular interest are usually short or long lengths of stay. A random sample of 50 patients who received the treatment was selected, and the length of stay and the number of days was recorded for each patient. The results are summarized in the following table and in the dot plot. So this is what we call a frequency table. It shows the different lengths of stay and how many patients had that actual length of stay. Now remember, we did have a total of 50 patients. So we see here, for example, um, four patients stayed for five days. Uh, 11 patients stayed for eight days. One patient stayed for 21 days. Okay, you get the idea. We also see a dot plot here where we actually see dots to represent each patient. So there's my four dots for the four people that stayed for five days. And we see 13 dots at six, 14 dots at seven, one dot at that 12 and one dot that 21. Okay, you get the point. Determine the five number summary for the distribution of the length of stay. All right, so first off, if you didn't already know, what is a five number summary? Well, it's literally just five numbers. What five numbers? The minimum. That's easy. The lowest number of days was five. The maximum. That's easy. The highest number of days was 21. The median. The lower quartile known as Q1 and the upper quartile known as Q3. All right. I'm going to talk about how to find those values. Obviously, the min and max are pretty easy. Hope that's not a big deal. Hope I don't have to explain that. But how do you find the lower quartile, the median, and the upper quartile? Well, the long way to do it is to actually count. So to find the median, there is a formula to tell us where the median is. You take your sample size plus one and you divide by two. So if I do that on my calculator, 50 plus one divided by two is 25 and a half. Now what that means, since I got 25 and a half, is that the median is located between the 25th and 26th value. So it's the, it would be the average of the 25th and 26th value falling right in between 25 and 26. So I just have to count to find that. So I'm gonna start counting here. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Here's the 25th value. Here's the 26th. They both represent seven days. So the mean of those two middle values is seven. So that is how I knew the median was seven. Then the lower quartile is the middle of the bottom 25 values. So there's 25 as numbers at the bottom, 25 numbers at the top, right? 50 splits half and half. So the middle of 25 would be the 12th value. Or actually the 13th value. So if you got 25, it'd be the 13th value is the middle. So if you count to find the 13th value, you find out that that's six. And then if you count from the top, the middle of the upper 25 values would be the 13th value from the top. So if you count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, there we find out, uh, 13, sorry. There we find out that the middle of the top half is eight days. Now, if you're like, ah, there's got to be an easier way. Well, there actually, there is a way easier way. Here, let me walk you through it. You can actually use your TI-84 calculator if you have one to do this. First, we're going to hit stat, and we're going to go to edit, and we're going to take a look at our data. Now, what we're going to do is in list one, we're going to list all of the possible lengths of stay. So five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nobody has stayed for 10 or 11 days, 12, and then a whole bunch of other days that nobody stayed, and then 21. So list all those. In list two, we're going to put the corresponding frequencies. Four people stayed five days, 13, six, 14, seven, and so forth. Once you have all that entered into your calculator, you're going to hit stat, slide over to calculate the top and select number one. But we have to tell the calculator to use list one as our list of values, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and so forth. And then the frequency list is how many times each of those values actually occurred. And that's what we're going to tell the calculator to use the frequency list as list two. Then we're going to go ahead and hit calculate. And we get the mean, X, X bar. We get S, the standard deviation. But more importantly, scroll down, you get the five number summary. The min is five, the max is 21, 
Q1, 6, median 7, Q3, 8. So pretty easy to do that. But another thing is, you know, with, with data this simple and only whole numbers, finding those numbers should be pretty easy to do anyway. All right, that's the five number summary, nice and simple. All right, part B has two parts. Part B says, consider two rules for identifying outliers, method A and method B. Method A represents the one plus, or excuse me, 1.5 times IQR rule. Hopefully that sounds familiar to you. And method B represents the two standard deviation rule. So the first part is to use method A to determine if there's any potential outliers. So if you're not familiar, this is called the fence method. So we're going to find what's called the upper fence. Anything above the upper fence in your data is considered an outlier. To find the upper fence, you take Q3, add 1.5 times the IQR, which is why it's called the 1.5 times the IQR rule. So for me in my data, the IQR, I got to figure out, which only takes a second. The IQR is simply the difference between Q3 and Q1. So that's 8 minus 6, and the IQR is 2. So to find that upper fence, I'm going to take Q3, which is 8. I'm going to add 1.5 times my IQR, which is 2. Feel free to use a calculator to do this if you want. But again, the math's pretty simple here. Uh, none of this math is really that hard. But taking Q3, adding 1.5 times the IQR gives me 11. That means anybody staying more than 11 days would be considered an outlier. So if I go back to my data, I had two people stayed more than 11 days, the 12 and the 21. So I have two upper outliers, 12 and 21 days are both upper outliers. Then I'm going to find my lower fence. My lower fence is found by taking Q1 minus 1.5 times the IQR. Once again, that's why it's called the 1.5 times the IQR rule. My lower, or my lower quartile Q1 was 6 minus 1.5 times 2. Again, if you don't want to do that math in your head, grab the calculator, no big deal. 6 minus 1.5 times 2 is 3. Did anybody stay less than three days? Go back and look at your data. No, the lowest number of days stayed at the hospital for this particular treatment was five. Nobody stayed less than three. So that means there are no lower outliers. So this identifies two values as being outliers. Those would be the two people, the one that stayed 12 days and the one that stayed 21 days. Part B of Part two of part B, excuse me, wants us to use the uh, find a potential outliers using what's called the two standard deviation rule. The two standard deviation rule is this. If you take your mean and you add and you subtract two standard deviations, anything outside of that, so that means anything above two standard deviations, anything below negative two standard deviations, anything outside of that range would be considered a outlier. So they give us the mean and they give us the standard deviation, which is pretty cool because I actually already knew those numbers because of what we did on our calculator already. So I'm simply going to take the 7.42 and let me first add, I guess the order you do the add and subtraction doesn't really matter, but I'm going to do two standard deviations, which would be two times the 3.7. So once again, I'm going to grab my calculator, 7.42, uh, let's do the subtraction first. I mean, what's the matter? Minus two times 2.37. That gives me a lower value of 2.68. And then we're going to go ahead and do the exact same thing, but this time we're going to take this 7.42 and we're going to add 2 times 2.37. And we get 12.16. So what this means is that any value inside of these two lengths of stays, anywhere from 2.68 days to 12.16 days, is not an outlier. Anything outside of those values is an outlier. So our lowest value, once again, was staying five days. Four patients stayed five days. That was our lowest value. So clearly no value was below the 2.68. Anything above 12.16 would be an outlier. So if we look at our data, well, we actually only have one value that's above 12.68. Uh, 12, we did have one person say 12 days, but that is not above two standard deviations. That is 12.68 is more than 12, so sorry. So in this scenario, we only have one upper outlier, and that is the person that stayed 21 days. So in this case, 21 days would be considered an outlier. The 12 would not because it was not 
within the 12.16. Again, 12.16 was too high. 12 is underneath that, so 12 would be considered in our range of, um, you know, not an outlier. All right, that's it for part B. Hopefully it's pretty simple using those two techniques. Now, part C says, explain why method A might identify more data points as potential outliers than method B. In fact, that actually is what happened. Um, using the outlier, the 1.5 times the IQR rule, uh, we find two outliers, 12 days and 21 days. Using the standard deviation rule, we found only one outlier at 21 days. So, so why is that? Um, and again, it says specifically, why would this happen for a distribution that is strongly skewed to the right? Now, I have a very formal typed up answer to this, and please pause the video right now and read that. That is a really good explanation. And obviously, you know, a lot of kids say, do I have to write all of that to get a good grade? Mm, honestly, no. But I mean, my job is to show you the, the best, fullest answer. But um, again, so please take the time to pause and look at that. But I want to kind of draw you a picture to help understand why this is. So if we have a distribution that is skewed to the right, okay, there we go. Now, remember what happens when you're skewed to the right. The mean is going to get higher than the median. So the mean might get a bit pulled up here somewhere. I'm just kidding. I might be a little bit, being a little bit dramatic, but it's to the right. So when I throw my two standard deviations down and my two standard deviations up, notice that because the X bar is already high, when I go two standard deviations higher, then I, I, go, I go pretty high up which means that my fence or, or my limit to what's an outlier, remember anything above two standard deviations, so anything up here, is going to be considered an outlier. So because the mean gets pulled to the right with skewed right data, that upper value that marks where outliers begin is higher. And when that upper value is higher, there are naturally going to be less potential outliers. Whereas the median, um, excuse me, the 1.5 times the IQR rule, that doesn't care about the mean. That just simply uses your Q1 and your Q3 to identify outliers. And when you're skewed right and skewed left, your Q1 and your Q3 aren't affected by that skewness. They don't get pulled one way or the other. So when we go down 1.5, IQR from Q1 to create that lower fence, or, or likewise, we go up 1.5 times the IQR to create that upper fence, we're not going up as high as the standard deviation rule goes up because the mean is getting pulled higher. When we go up two standard deviations from a number that's already being pulled higher, then that fence or, or that marking for what's an outlier is going to be higher. And when it's higher, there's less room for outliers. So if you look above my IQR fence, there is more room for outliers. Look all that room for outliers versus if we only look above the standard deviation fence, there's less room there for outliers. So that's essentially what I'm saying over here on the left, nice and typed out and, and very professional. But hopefully drawing the picture there and understanding the mean moving up is actually understanding why that leaves the door open for less upper outliers in that sense. All right, that's it for question number one from the 2021 exam. Hopefully it made sense and um, you'll ace it if you ever see a question similar.